Welcome back to Citizen Sleeper 2, continuing on. If I click on this now, I see that I've got one point available, so I can do some upgrades. One point available. Minus one crew stress and less full. Plus one to affected crew dice. What does this say over here? Interface. What is the... Oh, got a number four there. I need four points. So in other words, I need four points to upgrade those. And two. I can't do nothing with my one point anyway. Right now. Active quests to escape the Hexport, recruit local crew. So this is where I am. Um, data diffusal shift. Contract board. Find a ship fitter, get the feed lines. Recruit local crew. Cruise. That's engaged. That's intuition. That's not a good option. Not really. New location discovered. The warehouses, freight storage, freight loading, the warehouses at the Hexport docks supply the industrial operations of the station, meaning they need constant loading and restocking. So what do you get for that? Well, the dice I've got left right now are not good anyway, so... 25% positive, 50% neutral, 25% negative. It's risky. Not good. I lost energy. Positive outcome. I, I got a bit. I got some money. Okay. I can't do much more with this, can I? So I have to go back to the rig, I think. I've got to get some energy back.
I can make a meal if I had supplies, which I don't. Rest and recover. <laughs> hmm. Well, I want to get some energy back. Okay. Now go here and end the cycle. I got good dice. Notice that this is ticking. The clock is ticking. So, chapter cruise. There we are. Positive outcome. As you are gliding across the docking concourse, you hear a scuffle. The noise of raised voices cuts through the conversation, drifting out of the dockside shops. Glancing down an alley, you see a huddle of figures shouting back and forth. You spot one man in the middle of the group surrounded, pushing the others back as they grab at the bags slung over his shoulder. You don't like the way this looks. But then again, Seraphine told you to keep your head down. What are my options? Rush in. Using my endurance, which is high. I can cause a distraction or wait. Oh, I'm going to rush in. Positive outcome. Without thinking, you kick off and glide down the alley, nudging the parabola of your drift, so you slam directly into the back of the most aggressive assailant. The impact sends them into the steel wall, and as if on cue, the figure under attack lashes out at the nearest body, swinging his bags in a crunching arc that sends his target tumbling head over heels back down the alley. The next moments are a blur of impacts as you grapple in the alley, kicking off from pipes and panels. A few seconds later, a call signals the assailant's retreat, and they flee, shouting curses at you and the figure. You steady yourself, and a heavy hand falls on your shoulder. Am I supposed to be impressed? The man gives you a sceptical look. You like to throw yourself into fights you have no stake in? He laughs. Boat's gonna eat you up. I was hoping. How about some thanks? The man laughs. Well, he shakes his head. Guess, thanks, I guess. He kicks off and drifts past you. You watch the man go, and then after a moment, he stops and turns back. He rubs his forehead, looking down as he does. What is your deal anyway, he sighs. Maybe you're new here, but Hexport is no place for do-gooders. You needed help? I know what it's like. I need help. I know what it's like. To get beat up, the man shakes his head. Hexport's got real tough. Look, let's not hang around, all right? The man pats his chest. I'm Feeny. He unshoulders one of the bags and pushes it towards you. Make yourself useful. Let's head. Get the strap of the bag over your shoulder and follow him through the docks, gliding past the concourse towards the connecting bridges. He cuts down a side passage, looking back to check you are following. Then he stops at a docking bridge connecting to a dull green ship with yellow markings. You look out the viewing window at its odd catamaran-like shape, seemingly built from two separate holes wheeled together. Symbol crash, he says, and you assume that's the ship's name. Feemy, you bring in in strays a young woman, brightly dressed and stretching as she glides, drifts into the passage. She glances at you. No offence. Nia. Feemy shakes his head. This one. He squeezes your shoulder, helping you fend off some hexport scum. While you were busy sunning yourself. Nia raises an eyebrow. I'm sure you could handle them, big brother. Her glib response hides the flash of concern that passes across her face. 
You can't tell a thing you noticed. Nia turns to you. Thanks, she smiles sweetly. And I'm sorry for my brother. She shoots him a glance, just in general. Nia, Femi, marries enough now. He reaches over and takes the bike you were carrying. Nia rolls her eyes at you, but stays silent. Factory Row couldn't take these. Femi has the bags. I'm going to load, load them back up. Maybe we'll find a use for them. He turns back to you. Thanks for the assist, sleeper. He nods firmly. Not what I expected. He slaps the button for the bridge door and kicks off along the docking bridge on his way to the simple crash. Nia looks at you with raised eyebrows. I hope my brother was joking, or did you really help him? It was nothing. Humble and a hero, she laughs. Thank you, she looks back at the ship. My brother needs help more than he admits. What do you mean? It's okay. What do you mean? She tenses. I don't know if. She smiles a tight smile. I shouldn't have said anything. She pauses, thinking. I want to ask you something. She takes a deep breath and then gives you a direct look. What is she building up to? Are you looking for crew? She looks away. Sorry to be direct, but you seem like, well, if you are on Hexport, maybe you are with a crew. She stops herself. I mean, maybe your crew needs crew. Maybe you are looking. I am. She struggles to hide her smile. Nia looks back at the ship, then at you. Look, I'll be honest, being on a crew with my brother is nice, but he is suffocating me. She frowns at her own bluntness. Not a kid anymore, you know, but he still sees me like one. She shrugs. I want to show him I can handle myself. I need experience. I need to run some contracts. She gives you a determined look. What do you say? I'll think about it. I'm not sure. Shouldn't I ask your brother? Mm, I'll think about it. I'm a good salvager, all right, you can use me. She smells I can spot things, find gaps, ways in. She folds her arms across her chest. I know what I'm doing. Fimi taught me well. She glances back at the ship. Just consider it, all right, let me prove myself. Suddenly a shout comes from the ship echoing down the passing. Fimi, he seems to make both of you nervous. Nia looks in his direction. I should go. She pushes off towards the docking bridge. I'll be waiting. Nia gives you one last glance, blah 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 blah. So there we are, we've done that. If I bring up the map, where can I, can I go anywhere? Yeah, I've got to go there. I am going to need a couple of fuel. Buy fuel. Also buy supplies too. Let's make sure I've got some supplies. Now let's go there and who do I take? Locked. So, I will take Junie. Solheim derelict fills the cockpit windows all twisted plates and skeletal strut work. You watched it in horror and fascination as Seraphim completed the approach, both of you silent in the presence of this decaying beast. Now as you settle beside it, Seraphim is the first to break the silence. This thing is already dead. He shakes his head. It's a corpse sleeper. He nudges the ship closer, looking for a place to dock. I touched this thing too hard. It'll crumble into dust. Let's not do that. What were you expecting? Or stay silent. A silent treatment. Seraphine glances back at you. No advice? Take us up there. That's the bridge. Junie points towards one end of the ship, and both you and Seraphine turn around. 
Having forgotten she was even in the cockpit, she hasn't said a word since she departed. She glances at both of your bemused faces while she looks away. Sorry, I just... That's where we need to go. She stops pointing. Seraphine nods towards Junie. She's not wrong. Sleep the bridge would be a good start. Hmm. Access the wreck first or to the bridge? Bridge. Let's do it. Seraphim takes control of the ship, avoiding the debris field closer to the centre of the wreck. He settles in position near a protrusion at the far end. This is as far as I'll go. Seraphim taps at the anchoring controls. We should be able to anchor the ship to those planes. You hear Juni begin to protest from behind you, but it is too late. Seraphim fires two pit on tipped anchor lines at the nearest solid hull planes. The pittons slam into the plates, and despite their solid appearance, they instantly shatter. Fragments spinning out across the wreck, slicing into other plates and building a spiralling storm of debris. Shit! Seraphim nudges the ship back and steadies it as the debris cascades across the surface of the wreck. The damage seems mostly superficial, but it underlines just how fragile the derelict is. Let's not do that again. The data core will be very fragile. We have to... We've got it, Seraphim snaps. He angrily unclips from his seat. Last thing I need is a backseat driver. He kicks off and glides past her into the corridor. Sorry, Junie. Let's go. Follow him. Let's go. You follow Seraphine down the passage with Junie close behind. As you reach the airlock, he is already angrily suiting up his frustration evident. Keep it cool. Seraphine looks up. Yeah, yeah. He glances at Junie. No hard feelings, right? He checks the seals on his shoulders, but this is a job, not a social event. The rest of the preparation process takes place in tense silence, each of you considering the delicate job ahead. You suit up too, though you don't need a helmet to breathe, you slide one on and lock the seals for protection. This wreck isn't going to give up its salvage easily. The core should be near the bridge, maybe even inside it, but there's a lot of wreck here, and there might be good salvage tucked away in the cargo hold. Once the suits are on and the seals are checked, you cycle the lock and stare out at the vast expanse of the twisted hulk before you. Time to go to work. What have I got to do here? Well, there's two options. There's corroded airlock, bridge entry, and the depressed, de depressurized bay for the cargo entry. I will go bridge entry. Um, it will take longer, but cutting away the lock, layer by layer, is the safest way to make it through engineer skill. Force the lock. Forget being delicate, the clock is running on the contract. And forcing the lock is the fastest way to gain entry. And down here, these both lead to bridge entry. So what do I go for? Got a hundred percent chance of a positive result there. Either way, I choose the safest way. Hmm, gotta make decisions. I have also can use their dice as well. That gets reduced to a 1, that gets reduced to a 1, so I'm not going to do that. Junie is not good at this stuff. Right. And he isn't. He'll be alright with forcing the lock, though. That's a 100% positive result. I'm going to try the force the lock option. We pushed through. Nice. 
Well, we made progress. The airlock on the derelict is rusted shut. Opening it up is necessary to enter and investigate the wreck's bridge. So he's only got a one dice left. She's got a six. But that gets reduced to a four if I... I put my I put my six in there. Hundred percent positive. So I've made good progress there. I've also got another six die. So I use that one. Good progress again. I could put a five in there. But this is one of the damaged ones. Fifty percent positive, fifty percent neutral. So now things get a bit tricky. Her six becomes a four. Because the engaged skin is missing. I got my damaged one. Oh, I don't know. I got away with it. I'm just one segment away from bridge entry now. I put that one in there, 25% positive, 50% neutral, 25% negative. And it's the same for that one. The contract stress has triggered a crisis. A crisis will add one contract stress per cycle and that's resolved at the crisis location. The bridge of the derelict lies silent. The pale beams of your suit lamps catch rows of terminals in clouds of glittering dust. Wires wave like seaweed and the whole scene appears as if underwater, chaotic but still. Juni glides past you, disturbing the dust and taking you by surprise as she does. She has been a stoic presence so far, but in this moment she seems drawn forward by some force of curiosity. You watch as she bats away debris and begins checking terminals. Let her work. She is already prying an access panel off one of the more intact looking terminals, and as she does, puffs of rust colour the vacuum around her. Red. Approach. She turns back to the terminal and finishes prying off the plate, then quickly she reaches inside, fishing around for something. Her hand comes back out with a waving cable top with a thick connector. As soon as she sees it, she slips a keyboard sized deck out from somewhere on her person. She runs her hand across the the back until she finds the right port and slots in the connector. All of this happens in a few seconds. The routine practiced and precise. It is hard not to be impressed. Not your first ship. Nicely done. Let her work. We'll see, we'll see, she says so quietly it seems mostly to herself. Junie's fingers dance across the deck's keyboard and a burst of static lights up the Solheim terminal screen. The sudden burst of light and colour takes you by surprise. Junie's figures tap away, the terminal screen is flushing with blocks of colour and lines of code. It buzzes and vibrates, its long dead systems forced back into chaotic life. Then all at once it goes dark, the terminal is dead. Shit, Junie hisses beneath her breath, useless. You cannot tell if the insult is directed at the terminal or herself. Find anything? There are plenty more. What are you doing? She looks up at you, as if she was just waking from a dream, looking for something useful. She pauses. Useful for the contract, that is. She glances down. A map of the ship and plans, you know. The cradle with the data core can't be far. She pushes off from the terminal, gliding away from you. I'll start looking, she calls back, and heads to the other side of the bridge. Seraphine glides up beside you. Everything all right? What do you think of Juni? All good. Good. Seraphine claps you on the shoulder. Seraphine stretches in his suit. I have to admit it's nice to be back working, especially now that we are the ones who will reap the benefits. He claps you on the shoulder, feels good to be taking our fate into our own hands. I know it's pretty rough back there on Hexport, and out there we're just as likely to get shredded by debris as find the damn data core, but aren't you glad we made a break for it? He pauses, he looks down, having asked the question almost by accident. I mean, I'm, I just don't want to speak for you. I'm glad to. We'll see. I don't know. It's a lot. Seraphine smiles. You better be. I didn't give up that little dark side cupboard I was letting in for nothing. He laughs at his own joke. 
Look, Seraphine checks his suit's wrist seals once we've got a bit of space behind us, once we've got the distance. If we even manage to get that far. He furrows his brow. Don't feel you owe me. I'm no charity case. You want us to go our separate ways? Fine by me. He meets our, your eyes. Just do me the favour of telling me to my face. That won't happen. I will. I will. Seraphine nods but doesn't respond. After a moment, he shines his torch out into the dark, checking the rows of terminals all across the bridge. You watch the glittering dust as it eddies in the beam. Seraphine sighs, let's get to it. You watch as he crosses the bridge's torch, probing the dark corners. You feel a chill run through your body as you imagine the people that once ran the ship. The Solheim crews, surely long dead. What is that? Blah, 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 blah. Too long, too long, too long, text. What now? Reboot the system, track the pathways, data core location. Not got much in the way of die left now though. Reboot the system's link with interface, track the pathways as linked to endurance. I've got good endurance on my character. That four becomes a five. And progress. That's no good. That's a one anyway. I've only got a two left, so... Yeah, I've got supplies. Try it. Oh, no. Bad outcome. What can I do here then? And to make a meal, that's not available in this section here. Can't do that. End the cycle, so I refresh the dice. So I can try and resume what I was doing. Oh! Hell Breach's Crisis. Didn't see that. The derelict's hull is falling apart. If this breach isn't sealed and fast, the entire wreck will collapse. Better get on it then. Endurance. You're not good at that. You are. Help. Unfortunately, my die are not good here. Although that does get upped a little bit. Two to a three. Four. That's my best option, I think. That gets reduced to a three. This is risky maneuvers. I've only got twos left. Up to a three. I'm going to have to risk it. Bad outcome. Breach shield. Alright, so unfortunately I used my die on that. I'm currently um, I'm currently over here working on this a long way to go on that but there's another option here too which is clear cargo doors 
There are layers and layers of broken hull plates blocking the cargo doors. This will require some heavy work endurance. Find access point. This isn't to cargo entry. If I want to go down that route, that's no good. That's no good. My two becomes a three in there. That's no good. Getting into the cargo entry means breaking through the shattered remains of the aft hull. But no good dice left. Your five could be put to use somewhere, surely. Yeah, over here. Well, okay then. Progress towards the data core location. That's all I can do, end cycle. Refresh the die and try to work towards my goal here. So that gets reduced, that gets increased. So that worked. His four could go in there, endurance skill found. But could be a risky move. I used my own die in here. Five becomes a six. 100% chance of success. It's gotta be. Gotta do it. My four becomes a five. And we done it. Completed the circle, data core location. And then that opens up the next screen. Isolate the core using interface. Slice the core engineer. Two pathways. My four stays as a four in there. Two becomes a one. Four becomes a two. No, nope, we're not doing that. He's no good in there. I'm no good in there. Uh, this is going to be tricky. Slice the core. Risky. They're both risky options. Though the potential for damage is high. The core is fragile, but the rerouting the data connections to it from its cradle, it could be lifted free without damage, at least in theory. This is a very awkward one for me, because interface skill is missing. For all of us. So the slice of the core option is really risky. I would prefer to go that route. Ah. But I'm relying on my own dice here. They are not going to help me. Damn. What about this section here? Do I work on this? He could be useful in there.
stress is down. Why four to a five? Okay, new location discovered. Cargo storage. Map the bays. Countless vast bays extend from here deep into the derelict. Scanning and mapping each one will allow you to navigate them safely. This end of the derelict is partially intact. If you can survey it, perhaps you can find some valuable scrap among the decay. This is interface skill. I'm no good. No good. Hmm. It's only a two. But I would use Junie there. I'm going to go back here and end the cycle again. Now get back to work. What I'm working on is the data core cradle. Junie's on a five. That gets reduced. Can't put that there. This is where you shine. Got it. Go the isolate the core route. Because I really do want to go down that route. But that's only a two. And unfortunately, I'm no good in there. So the slice the core option is the risky option, and I've only got my best dice is a four. And I'm not liking the look of that. Really not. I'm no good for that. The only person who's good for that is Junie. Ah, oh, damn. So, uh, I haven't spent any of my dice here. That's unfortunate. I'd like to be able to do that, but... Mm. No good. My options are... Go back to the rig and... Wait again. I mean, this is, does not look good. 50% neutral, 50% negative outcome there. Slice the core. I don't know. When did it last save? By the way. Let's leave that because I know. 43 seconds ago. Okay, see you next time. To be continued.